Hello friends, welcome back to physics and animation. So far, whenever we talked about the forces or electric fields between charges, we have considered charges as a point charge. But what if we want to determine the intensity of the electric field at a point due to charged wire? Because Coulomb's law is only valid for point charges, so we cannot apply it for charged wire. So let's start by understanding charge distribution. What is charge distribution? If we talk about the distribution of charges at microscopic level, we can have many charges on a wire. And we can even think about spaces between charges where no charge is present. Such a distribution of charges is called a discontinuous charge distribution. At microscopic level, when we are dealing with few tens or hundreds of charges, it may seem possible to calculate resulting force and electric field intensity by adding up the force and electric field due to each individual charge for a point. However, when we come to the macroscopic level, where we have to deal with the countless charges in a wire, it becomes impractical to consider a discontinuous charge distribution. Here we require a continuous charge distribution, according to which we assume that charges are present everywhere in the body and there is no gap between them. In other words, we assume that charges are continuously distributed throughout the body. Ok, if it is so, we can consider a small element del L on a wire. This element may be quite small at the macroscopic level, but it would have a large number of charges on it, which is sufficient to define the charge del Q on the element. To simplify the calculation, a new term, linear charge density lambda is introduced which is equal to the charge del Q by del L. Linear charge density physically defines that how much charge is present per unit length of the wire. And this type of charge distribution is also known as linear charge distribution or line charge. Now, let's place a test charge Q0 at point P separated by distance R des from the element del L to measure the electric field intensity at point P. Since the size of the del L element is much smaller than the distance R des, we can consider del Q as a point charge and Coulomb's law can be applied now. Therefore, the small electric field del E at point P will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught times del Q divided by R des square. Using the formula of linear charge density, we can write the charge del Q as lambda into del N. In the same way, we can consider a number of possible del L elements on the wire and by using vector sum and the principle of superposition, we can calculate the total electric field at point P due to the all del Q charges. This can also be expressed in a simplified way as electric field equals 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught the summation all del L lambda into del L divided by R des square. Since electric field is a vector quantity, we need to multiply the equation with the unit vector R des cap to specify the direction. As we saw in the last video, if we multiply the electric field equation with test charge Q0, we got the equation for the total force acting on Q0 at point P due to the electric field. Ok, now when del L is very small or tends to zero, the sum becomes an integral and we can write the equation for electric field and force in integral form where del L will be replaced by dl. This is useful when we need to calculate the equation for electric field at a point due to a wire or line charge. Similarly, if we are given a surface charge distribution, we can take multiple small surface elements del S and del Q and use the superposition principle to calculate the electric field intensity at point P, just as we did for the wire. Just as we used lambda to denote linear charge density, we will use sigma to denote surface charge density, which will be equal to del Q by del S, indicating how much charge is present per unit area. This means that the electric field due to a surface charge will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught summation all del S sigma into del S divided by R des square. Since electric field is a vector quantity, we will multiply it by unit vector R des cap 
if del s tends to 0, we can write this equation in integral form by using ds instead of del s. Similarly, if we are given volume charge distribution, we will use rho to denote volume charge density, which will be equal to del q by del v, indicating how much charge is present per unit volume. Now, in the similar way, we will use small volume element del v and their associated charge del q to calculate the resulting electric field at point P using the superposition principle, just as we did for the surface charge and line charge. Also, we can derive similar equations for volume charge distribution in summation and integral form as well. Essentially, Coulomb's law and the superposition principle allow us to calculate the electric field intensity at any point due to linear, surface or volume charge distribution. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.